Greetings to you all. My name is Ansila Namo Katsamdanga. I'm going to present uh, on uh, Southern African archaeology, the state of the discipline. Um, this is a, a survey of uh, um, the current state of uh, archaeology, looking at uh, the uh, thematic areas of uh, focus uh, and uh, the different um, areas in which uh, archaeological research is being carried out uh, in Southern Africa. Uh, the presentation will be um, in uh, two uh, parts, uh, the introduction and uh, I will also look at the different areas uh, that I think uh, Southern Africa is uh, uh, focusing on today. Uh, this include uh, what I consider is uh, cross-cutting issues. Uh, um, and then uh, I'm also going to look at uh, nuances uh, in uh, adding uh, more and uh, new research data to what we already know. Uh, so I think those are the areas that uh, Southern African archaeology uh, is uh, currently um, engaged in. I want to do a disclaimer that the presentation does not pretend to cover uh, all that Southern African archaeology is about, but rather it's a generalized survey of the major uh, issues and uh, the survey is also um, characterized by my own personal perspectives uh, on the discipline. Uh, the examples that I'm going to give for the survey are mainly coming from uh, research papers that have been presented at the last two um, um, Association of Southern African Professional Archaeologists uh by in our conference from 2017 and 2019 uh, i believe these uh, um these uh, two conferences illustrate uh, the areas in the thematic areas uh, in which uh, archaeologists are researching on um so uh, the there are two major cross cutting uh, issues that I consider to characterize archaeology, uh, uh, Southern African archaeology uh, today. Uh, these are decolonization, uh, the decolonization agenda, and uh, innovation and industrialization agenda. Um, looking at the first one, uh, decolonization agenda, uh, in terms of decolonization, this to me, uh, refers to all the processes of losing colonial vestiges in archaeological practice, uh, data collection, uh, in analysis, in interpretation, uh, and presentation or publication of uh, results. So I think um, archaeologists are engaged in trying to uh, decolonize all aspects of uh, archaeological uh, practice. Uh, of course, decolonization is not a new focus area in Southern Africa. I think it has always been there, uh, especially uh, for African archaeologists who uh, started to practice uh, archaeology. Uh, they have always considered that archaeology should uh, have an African uh, focus and also answer to African uh, ideals and uh, um, aspirations. So uh, it has always been there, but now uh, it is more uh, defined uh, mainly because of uh, what is also happening outside of the discipline where others uh, are demanding change and accountability in terms of uh, um, the disciplines uh, in general, but also archaeology finds itself 
uh, facing this demand for accountability and for relevance uh, in the African context. So there is need uh, for decolonization and it has become very much um, prevalent to look at uh, decolonization uh, uh, aspects wherever archaeological research is, uh, is done. So as I mentioned, this is done, uh, this is uh, reflected in how we collect data as archaeologists, how we define archaeological data, what is archaeological data. Archaeologists are reviewing all this, uh, considering uh, the African perspective and considering uh, the possible colonial vestiges in this in the definitions of uh, uh, archaeological data. We also look at archaeological analysis. How can we uh, analyze uh, archaeological data in such a way that uh, it becomes relevant to uh, the African ideals? And how can we use, what kind of methodologies can we use uh, to uh, get that information? Uh, are our methodologies not uh, defined by our colonial past and uh, uh, such? Uh, kinds of analysis. So we look at, we see decolonization in terms of uh, uh, data analysis. Uh, and as well as data interpretation, what does the data mean? And to whom uh, is the data considering African sensibilities? Um, can it be understood by Africans who are not necessarily archaeologists? These are uh, the issues in decolonizing archaeological research that people face uh, in terms of interpretation. We also, uh, the decolonization agenda is very prevalent in terms of uh, presentation and publication of results. Uh, African uh, researchers are looking at uh, whether uh, we are presenting the data to the African audiences in the right manner, uh, what is uh, a relevant publication? Is a publication in high impact journals useful when it is not going to be read by uh, people uh, who are in Africa and who um, are relevant, who, find, who may find the data relevant in their day-to-day -day lives? So, we are also asking who are we writing for? Uh, what is the information that we are writing in those uh, publications and how does it benefit uh, Africa in general? So decolonization agenda is found in uh, the presentation of uh, results. Um, as I said, I will look at the uh, previous, two previous uh, uh, conferences, and if you look at the papers that were presented there, uh, although in the in the first in the 2017 uh, uh, conference, uh, the decolonization agenda is not as apparent as in the 2019 uh, conference, where we find in the 2019 conference two of the keynote speakers we're talking about uh, the decolonization agenda. For example, uh, Professor Paul Lane uh, presented on hybridity and contextualizing identity, thoughts on decolonizing African archeology, span uh, which definitely indicates the uh, importance and the focus on uh, decolonization agenda. Uh, Professor Asera was uh, also presented on modern human origins and decolonizing, decolonization in Southern Africa, which uh, also indicate that uh, decolonization, the decolonization agenda uh, touches on all aspects of archeological heritage, including uh, human evolution and uh, human origin uh, research. Uh, you find that there was also a, a session on engaging with social justice prospects for archaeology, which talks uh, uh, closely to the issues of uh, decolonization. Uh, for example, uh, Professor 
um, Nyara Zmanyanga uh, presented on archaeology and social justice in Zimbabwe, evaluating prospects for a decolonized interpretation of the Zimbabwean archaeology. So Zimbabwean culture, Zimbabwe culture sites, which are very important sites in Southern Africa. So he's talking, he was talking about how we can decolonize uh, that part of uh, component of archaeological, uh, our archaeological past. So the decolonization agenda was very quite prevalent in 2019, and it is uh, continuing in the same uh, trajectory. Uh, apart from decolonization, uh, I think another aspect, another cross-cutting issue is that of innovation and industrialization. Uh, this is uh, coming in uh, in recent years, uh, and uh, you find that most uh, uh, people in, uh, maybe most archaeologists in the last three, four years uh, would do uh, be puzzled if they were to be told that they should contribute to innovation and industrialization. Yet this is now a reality in Southern Africa where colleagues from Namibia, colleagues from Botswana uh, and other parts of Southern Africa uh, are indicating that they are being asked to contribute uh, to innovation and uh, possibly uh, industrialization. Uh, so. Uh, this is also related uh, somehow to the decolonization agenda because uh, the, the contribution to innovation and industrialization will be a part of uh, uh, answering to those uh, demands that archaeology should be relevant uh, to Africa and also relevant to the uh, present day um, uh, Africans. So you find that uh, there is demand, not just from uh, uh, the public uh, as it were, but from governments uh, who are demanding a return on the investment of on archeological research uh, by uh, demanding that it should contribute to the production of goods and services that can actually be utilized by uh, the public. Uh, so there is a demand for uh, justification of archaeological research and justification of an investment uh, in human capital, in financial capital, in the, uh, into the discipline. Therefore, uh, although this, uh, this, um, uh, in, you know, the issue of innovation and industrialization was not very prevalent in the last two uh, ASAPA um, conferences, it's likely to take center stage as we go forward. Uh, the only example that I got was a paper uh, from myself and uh, my colleague, uh, which was uh, presented at the 2019 uh, conference uh, entitled Heritage uh, Innovation and research development implications of Zimbabwe's education 5.0 policy on the participation of youth in heritage utilization and conservation. Um, this refers to the Zimbabwe, Zimbabwe's policy for higher education, which demands that every discipline should be contributing uh, to uh, the production of goods and services, as well as every discipline should equip its students, its graduate, its graduates with uh, uh, skills to contribute to uh, economic the economic development of uh, the country. So, in that case, um, archaeology uh, has to be utilized uh, to be able to contribute to that. Uh, agenda. So this is, uh, I think, a cross-cutting issue that will touch on all aspects of archaeological research uh, going forward. And um, uh, it will, uh, as I said, it's not divorced from the issue of decolonization because uh, the issue of decolonization in general also 
uh, demands the empowerment uh, of locals to chart their own social and economic uh, pathways. So those are the two uh, cross-cutting issues. But in addition, uh, I believe Southern African uh, archaeologists are also looking at uh, uh, nuancing uh, the knowledge that we already have uh, uh, from the archaeological record of the region. Uh, and um, this is coming maybe from uh, looking from uh, uh, looking at um, themes, research themes, some research themes that have not been uh, touched on in the past that have been neglected in certain areas, uh, some research uh, areas, uh, geographic areas that have not been uh, worked on for particular themes, uh, deaths where we get new uh, technology coming up with new uh, forms of uh, deaths that can lead to uh, a review of the knowledge that we already have. So archaeologists are engaged in this. Um, so this is uh, in all areas, human evolution, rock art, um, landscape archaeology, uh, historical archaeology, the application of GIS, uh, and in all areas of archaeology, we find uh, researchers uh, researching on uh, new information that can add to what we already know in the archaeological record. If we look at uh, the uh, presentations that were made for the two uh, uh, supper conferences, you find that uh, some, uh, some of them reflect that uh, addition uh, to, to, to new uh, information and uh, the thematic areas that are there are similar. For example, in 2017, we had a, a session on paleo Pleistocene archaeology and paleoanthropology of Southern Africa, site, context, hominin, and tools. We still had a similar uh, session in 2019 where we had paleo Pleistocene archaeology and paleo anthropology, which shows that uh, we are adding on to that uh, particular area of uh, uh, archaeological research. Uh, the uh, theme, the session on recent contribution to later Stone Age and rock art research in Southern Africa uh, reflect uh, that kind of thinking where we need to add more on to what we had. We also had sessions on Iron Age and uh, farming communities in 2017. Uh, in 2019, uh, we had later Stone Age uh, undergatherers. Uh, we had uh, early Stone Age. We had a session on early Stone Age. We had a session on Middle Stone Age. We had a session, for example, on the Van der Weck uh, cave and related research projects in the Northern Cape, which is a, a, a site that has been under research for decades, showing that uh, people are continuing to add more information uh, to that uh, data. In addition to uh, researching on particular areas and adding nuances to, to the data that we know, uh, archaeological research in Southern Africa is also focused on heritage conservation and management. I believe the Southern Africa uh, is one area where conservation and management has been, uh, of archaeological sites has been part of uh, research focus for a long time for uh, probably decades since the 1990s. So this is a continuing uh, theme in Southern African uh, archeology span uh, and uh, much of archeological practice is intertwined with issues of heritage uh, conservation and management. You find that even outside the discipline uh, in, in heritage management in general, most archaeologists are leaders uh, in the discipline of heritage 
conservation and management because archaeology in Southern Africa, especially in Zimbabwe and other parts of uh, Southern Africa, it has always been uh, intertwined with heritage conservation. So uh, archaeology is uh, leading in terms of uh, heritage conservation. There is a lot of conservation, um, heritage conservation uh, research that is going on and uh, heritage conservation practice uh, that is going on. Uh, so it's the same for, for our uh, but last two biennial conferences, they reflect that uh, in each uh, of them, we have uh, sessions that deal with heritage conservation and um, management. Um, these are the areas that I believe are uh, uh, the areas where uh, Southern African archaeologists are engaged in. Uh, I believe this is this covers much of what uh, the um, the researchers are, are engaged in, but as I said, it doesn't uh, cover everything. I would want to thank uh, the organizers for inviting me to uh, present this paper, and I would also want to take thank my. Um, institution, the University of Zimbabwe, for providing me with support uh, uh, in it, for me to be able to uh, present uh, this uh, this uh, paper to you. Thank you very much.